Hi, welcome to the Brain Injury Answers Podcast. This is Dr. David Glazer providing the answers you need when a brain injury occurs. This podcast is for educational purposes only. For treatment, please consult your physician. This podcast does not represent the Department of Veterans Affairs. All right, let's get started. Question. My loved one sustained a hypoxic brain injury, but I've been told they are sending my loved one to a rehab center for traumatic brain injuries. Looking online, it seems like these are separate type of damage to the brain. So why would my loved one with a hypoxic injury be sent to a traumatic brain injury center? Answer. This is a great question. First, for all our our other listeners, let's explain the difference between a hypoxic injury and a traumatic brain injury. So, as we know, a traumatic brain injury often occurs from some sort of force being applied to the brain, which then affects the brain and causes maybe bleeding to the brain or damage to the brain cells. Whereas a hypoxic injury, which is also known as an anoxic brain injury or an ischemic brain injury, is when there is a lack of oxygen to the brain. Hypoxic means there is a decrease in the amount of oxygen to the brain, whereas an anoxic means there is no oxygen to the brain. In this regard, we have to understand what it means for oxygen to not get to the brain. So the more commonly understood sort of oxygen damage is in a heart attack. Blood does not get to parts of the heart and there's no oxygen that then gets to the part of the heart and then part of the heart muscle, the heart tissue, gets damaged. So in this same situation, oxygen is now not getting to parts of the brain and brain cells die. In a traumatic injury, the brain stills might very well still be alive, but are damaged. Whereas now in the hypoxic injury, the brain cells are completely damaged. So the easiest way I like to think about it and explain it to patients and their families is imagine a nice clean sheet of paper. In a traumatic brain injury, the piece of paper gets crumpled up and may be torn in different parts. But the paper is still there, and over time, the paper can flatten out and heal to a a certain degree. Whereas in a hypoxic brain injury, parts of the paper actually die and quote-unquote get ripped off and go into a garbage can. So those cells are no longer there and no longer present. So the brain has to work to heal differently. Because of this, one often sees that recovery of a patient with a hypoxic brain injury takes much longer than a patient with a traumatic brain injury. And we often see that a patient with a hypoxic brain injury generally does not make as well of a recovery as a patient with a traumatic brain injury. Now again, all this that you've just heard is not in specific terms in the sense that every type of traumatic or a hypoxic brain injury is different. And as you've all heard on past podcasts, there are different severities of traumatic brain injury. So therefore, it's hard to compare, in this case, apples and oranges. But this is the overall picture, the overall idea. Now, a lot of the symptoms and results of a traumatic brain injury are also seen in a hypoxic brain injury. 
which is why someone with a hypoxic brain injury will go to a traumatic brain injury rehab center because a lot of the same principles are used to treat both types of patients and a lot of the same symptoms are present in both types of patients. Now in a hypoxic brain injury again there could for whatever reason, there is less oxygen in the blood that makes it to the brain, whether, for example, it's a carbon monoxide poisoning or whatever else that may cause less oxygen to be in the blood that gets to the brain. A very common other form of a hypoxic brain injury is actually an ischemic brain injury where the actual blood flow to the brain is decreased we are starting to see more and more ischemic brain injuries patients why because of the fact that patients who may have some sort of cardiac arrest are now surviving those cardiac arrests but those cardiac arrests cause less blood to flow to the brain thus causing an ischemic brain injury and causing this sort of hypoxia this lack of oxygen to the brain now on imaging of the brain it's been found that some of the most common areas of the brain affected by lack of oxygen is our cerebral cortex so that is kinda like what a lot of people think of as the peaks and valleys the wrinkles of the brain the basal ganglia which affects our movements the pyramidal cells of the hippocampus and the hippocampus is involved in memory and also the cerebellum is affected and cerebellum helps with our balance so being that these are some of the most common areas affected in a hypoxic brain injury the most common symptoms are going to be memory issues and motor movement issues whether it's balance jerking constant frequent movements that are hard to control again there are various medications that can help control these movements but again most medicines that work on movements that are caused by the brain also make people very sleepy and delay the memory and the cognitive the thinking recovery of a patient so therefore one has to find a very good balance of these medications which can take time again medications like amantadine and Ritalin which are used in a traumatic brain injury patient are often used in a patient who has had some sort of hypoxic injury to the brain and all the other good medications and injections for spasticity and headache control and everything we've talked about in past podcasts apply in most cases to a patient who has had a hypoxic brain injury so again it is important to realize that someone who has had a hypoxic brain injury will display many signs that are similar to someone who has had a traumatic brain injury it's important to know that recovery may take even longer and the amount of recovery may not be as good and as accomplishing as someone who has had a traumatic brain injury but again it's good to hang in there be supportive of the patient be supportive of the rehab process and do everything possible to help facilitate a healthy recovery in a patient who has had a lack of oxygen and a hypoxic brain injury take place that's a wrap for today
Remember to email all your questions to braininjuryanswers at gmail.com. Check out the website www.braininjuryanswers.com. Thanks for listening.